Welcome to the Catholic Sphere. Each week we have a different host and a different focus as we tackle topics important to Catholics around the globe. I'm your host this week, Father Joseph Mary. Today we'll be talking about the works of mercy once again and how members of the church are bringing God's goodness and loving kindness to others through their spiritual and corporal works of mercy. Michael Warsaw is the chairman of the board and chief executive offices officer here at EWTN. Sister Joanne Belmont is the Mother Superior of the Missionaries of the Poor Sisters. Father Chris Alar is a Provincial Superior of the Marians of the Immaculate Conception in the United States and Argentina and former director of the Association of Marian Helpers. He is also host of the EWTN series, Living Divine Mercy. So last episode, we talked about the different works of mercy that you are involved in your various apostolates. Let's talk at the beginning of this program about what are your hopes and plans for the future of your apostolate. Michael? Well, you know, I think one of the things that Mother Angelica certainly impressed upon me, and I think all of us through her years, was, was that really never look back. Uh, we can be grateful for all the things that God has done, and that can shape and form, you know, where we go. But the important thing was always to, to look ahead, to look to, for new ways to reach people with the gospel and, and to share that message of mercy. Um, and so that's really what excites me as I look, as I look ahead and the, see the future of EWTN. Uh, the way that people consume media is, is changing, has changed dramatically. Uh, the way that younger generations in particular uh, consume media and content is completely different mm. than the way that prior yes. generations have consumed content. Um, and all of that can be, on the one hand, very challenging for, for EWTN as a media apostolate, uh, as a global media apostolate. Um, but I think the better way to look at that is to see what opportunities and, mm. and what ways God has uh, provided for us to carry out our mission uh, to new generations, uh, how, how we uh, can reach those who are millennials or Gen mm -hmm. Zs or uh, Gen Alphas now. You know, these, these are my children's ages, my grandchild's ages. How do we continue this mission, which is at its core the same as what Mother Angelica began in 1980, uh, but how are we able to be more effective? How are we able to bring the spiritual works of mercy um, into the lives of new generations of people who, who consume media and, and are confronting issues, too, which I think is also a very important mm. part of this. Yes. Um, the pressures and, and the realities of life in this age, in this digital age, uh, where so much is is happening uh, in the digital space, not even in real life and in, in, in right. real time in, in human relationships. How do we deal with all of that? How, how do we serve these future generations and, and future populations um, in a way that we bring them the message of faith, the message of hope, the message of mercy that has yeah. been the hallmark of EWTN's programming. So one of the things we've launched at EWTN is EWTN Next. This is a multi-year uh, endeavor. Uh, it's, mm -hmm. a, it's an umbrella of many, many initiatives that we are executing and building um, to really take EWTN out to new generations, to ensure that the blessings and, and the benefits that uh, have been uh, received by people over these last 40 years of EWTN's history are uh, able to be shared with new generations and, and that they can have the same benefit uh, of EWTN and its content and what it does uh, as, as those who've come before. So I'm, I'm very, very excited, yes. um, not daunted. Uh, it's challenging, uh, and it's a challenging environment. Uh, it's, a, it's an environment in the secular space that is very, very hostile to people mm -hmm. of religious faith. I think Father, Father Chris talked about that in, in our last episode of, mm -hmm. you know, the challenges that he's seen in terms of, of the reaction and response of the secular space and secular voices to preaching traditional Catholic teaching uh, on, on many hot-button issues. So there's challenges, no doubt. There are many, many challenges. 
but it's an exciting, exciting future ahead. Great, yeah, I'm excited about it too as you're leading us down the uh, path of the future here with Mother Angelica's spirits and uh, hopefully prayers guiding us, I'm sure she is. Sister Joanne, what are your plans too for the future? I know you're an international group, really. You have a number of sisters from different countries and what are some of your plans for the future? Well, some of my plans for the future is I would like to see a holy innocent in every um, country that we're in. Um, of course, you know, we have a convent in Kampala and I'm looking forward to opening up something, I hope and pray if God wills, Indonesia this year. I'm, I'm planning to go there in August. But I go back, I step back first. I would like to see one day a holy innocent, a holy innocent Kampala or Uganda. And mm -hmm. that is my, um, my hope and my dream. With God's blessings, it will come to be. And you talk about the international uh, quality of your community, that you have sisters from Africa as well, don't you, in your group? Yes, I have. I have sisters from Uganda, from Kenya, from the States, myself from Canada, Haiti. So we are um, an international group. So we bring a little bit of flair of, of our own past to our community. And it's um, quite interesting, um, I have to tell you. And, um, and, <laughs> and I'm looking forward to, as I said, opening up a, another door in, into another country. Um, in August, I'm, I'm flying out to Indonesia to meet with the bishop there and a couple of my sisters for coming with me and, um, and see how we can help there, um, you know, either with pregnant women or just taking care of the least of the least, um, those who need the care. And also, um, you have to evangelizing to those because Indonesia is not a Christian country. It's evangelizing about our Lord God to those who do not know him, and that's many. Beautiful. Father Chris, you are a provincial superior. Uh, what are some of your plans for the futures for the Marians? Well, we want to continue what we've already been doing over the last several years, our partnership with uh, EWTN and Reaching the Masses, our, our program Living Divine Mercy on Wednesdays, uh, 6.30 Eastern time has um, f uh, featured Many people like sisters uh, out there that are doing the corporal works of mercy, great stories, inspiring, and we want to continue that. That's the bedrock. But Jesus told St. Faustina that some people are limited in their ability to do the corporal works of mercy by time, their treasure, or their talents, um, or even being homebound. In, in Diary Passage 742, he told her there's a greater way that we can do works of mercy called the spiritual works of mercy. And um, in Diary 742, he mentioned word, deed, word, and prayer. So we, uh, we Marians in the future want to continue to teach and educate about this beautiful opportunity to be Christians uh, and not just being out there, um, being the hands and feet of Jesus, which is so important, but also being behind the scenes. You know, uh, those who are suffering, um, maybe being homebound, lying in their bed, as I always tell them, um, they have probably in many ways more merit uh, mm -hmm. that is uh, uh, given through the grace of God uh, by just offering up their suffering, um, yes. being able to pray for others, the living and the dead. And so we want to foster that. Our hope in the future is to foster more of the understanding of the spiritual works like Mother Angelica did. And that's why we began a new platform uh, called Divine Mercy Plus, um, mm. org. And uh, we originally did it because we were afraid we would probably get banned from uh, platforms like YouTube, uh, teaching the truth, as Michael just mentioned. Uh, we, we don't fear being banned from uh, EWTN for teaching the truth, <laughs> praise be God. But uh, the other platforms we, we, we have, uh, so we, we've started DivineMercyPlus.org to start putting out uh, the media um, videos and, and stories. Even now we're getting into uh, some movie production where we'll be able to teach the masses. Because, you know, everybody seems to understand the importance of the corporal works of mercy, even non-Christians or non-Catholics, uh, about needing to help the poor, needing to uh, provide for the needy, but much less understand the mm. spiritual need yes. um, because it is the spiritual side that's lacking in our world today. 
Well, you know that all of us, of course, are called to live both the spiritual and corporal works of mercy. Uh, let's talk about, and you mentioned some of this already, Father Chris, but Michael, talk about ways that people can get involved in these spiritual and corporal works of mercy that EWTN, the Missionaries of the Poor, the Marians are involved in. Sure. Well, obviously, there's there's always you know the interpersonal uh, capacity, and I think we always need to be conscious of you know how we relate to our brothers and sisters and and who are going through uh, you know whatever experience in their life. So so I think that's one. We always be be mindful in our own interactions with people of of how can we be an instrument of mercy of of those spiritual works of mercy uh, to others that we encounter. Uh, whether that's in our communities, our churches, or our workplaces. Um, I think as far as how people can uh, expand and, and, and um, amplify the work of EWTN, I think there's, there's so many ways. Um, certainly, uh, by sharing our content with people, if, if you encounter someone who's having a difficult moment, who's, who's really in despair over something, who's, who's having trouble mm. uh, you know, forgiving themselves or forgiving others, there's content, whether that's on our, our linear, regular television channels or on our on-demand platforms. Share, share content from EWTN. Share that with others. Um, in particular, for those new generations, those next generations that are coming, uh, who live in that digital space, that's an important way to evangelize. It's an important way, I think, to, to share a message of mercy with people, is using uh, content from our digital platform, sharing that with with their friends, sharing that with your children, your grandchildren. Uh, there are whole hosts of opportunities that people uh, can have. Uh, in addition, we have our media missionaries program, where yes. volunteers in every parish in the country help to promote and and make known the work of EWTN. That's an excellent way that um, people can, you know, with boots on the ground in their local uh -huh. parish and their local community help to make people aware who might not be aware of the work of EWTN. All of that is, is so important. And of course, um, at the end of the day, as Mother Angelica always used to say, keep us between your gas and electric <laughs> bill because yes. without uh, the, the you know, financial support of our, of our uh, EWTN family um, and without their prayers, none of this would be possible. Yes, I was talking with the uh, media missionaries recently on their webinar and I was talking about how I always go through the airport with program guides because I said my encounters with people in the airport may be a couple of few minutes long. But if I give them EWTN's web address or give them the program guide, that's going to be with them and it's there 24 hours a day. And like you said, Michael, that that content's there. We can refer people to that and then they can find other things that they might be interested in that the Lord might use. Now, Sister Joanne, uh, talk about, too, how can people help the missionaries of the poor and the missionary of poor uh, sisters? Well, obviously, they can come and volunteer with us. When, I'm, when I go up to Toronto to do my mission work up there, um, yes, of course, I tell them that the needs are great, and we rely on God's providence to help us with that because, as you know, you know, our, um, you know he gives free service to the least of our brothers and sisters. And God always provides, always provides. Um, he always sends good people. But I also tell them that um, we do have local offices that they can help there too. And we need prayers, of course, that they can, um, you know, have prayer groups and pray for us too. Because I have young sisters that need the encouragement, need the prayers to continue in this life. So prayers are very important. And they can set up, you know, little prayer meetings and pray for the young sisters to continue. They can help in the local area. I started, I started by helping them put a container to come down to Jamaica so they can mm -hmm. go to the local office of um, in MOP Canada and see what they can do. They can, I have to tell you the truth, many people know about us through EWTN. When they yes. come here, they say, I saw you on TV. <laughs> I, I saw you this. I said, you said this, you said this. And I said, yes. So I thank EWTN for helping us for so many years. I remember the first time I saw EWTN and Mother Angelica, I mean, I thought, wow. She's unbelievable. <laughs> and, um, you know, so here I am on her TV station many years later. I, I'm <laughs> yes. still in awe of, of all of this. 
but that's how they can help. They um they don't have to help big, just small ways, tiny ways. And you know, I've always said, you know, when you help and you do it with love, that's what counts. You know, it, you know, you send um a little you know rag doll to one of our children that has nothing, and um, but you send it with love, and we get many of this in the containers, and our children love it because they have nothing. They have nothing, and so that's what really um counts. You have to do it with love, and God will see all that love, and um, we, you'll be blessed by it. Yes, you have a beautiful video on your website. I'd encourage people to look at that where we saw little clips of some of the uh, video about what the sisters do there, the wonderful work that they do. Father Chris, how can people get involved with the Amerians and the Divine Mercy Apostolate? Yes, our, um, our growth, we've been uh, blessed with uh, so many vocations. We're actually trying to build a new monastery because we've... Uh, We've run out of room, so we have a good problem. Um, we have so many vocations, praise be to God, of men trying to um, become divine mercy priests, spread the message of mercy. So if God puts on your heart uh, to help, uh, we say be the apostle of divine mercy. Go out there, be the hands and feet. Don't be afraid to defend our, the truth of our faith. I keep thinking of great priests, uh, you know, for instance, at EWTN, like yourself, Father Joseph Mary, uh, Father Wade, Meninez is a great friend of mine, and uh, in our community, Father Don Calloway, or myself, who we're, we're trying hard to preach and teach the truth, which is so hard today, as uh, Michael just pointed out. I kind of give the example, um, is uh, admonish the sinner, which he mentioned uh, uh, in the last episode. I think that's so critical today in this, um, this lie of the world that uh, is redefining marriage, redefining genders, um, mm. re just leaving behind the sense of sin. And uh, so I think the best way you could help the Marians or the friars at EWTN is to uh, support those priests who are trying to defend the truth, um, you know, especially with admonishing the sinner. I, I laugh because... I keep threatening to write a book uh, called Catholicism, Why We Must Be Judgmental and Intolerant. <laughs> and everybody says, oh, oh, my father, oh, my. And I say, no, let me explain. Um, <laughs> yes. We cannot tolerate we cannot tolerate things contrary to the will of God. Um, if we if we see um, if you're a mother and all of a sudden they want to build a uh, a very uh, immoral nightclub next door to your house, you're going to say, no, I'm not going to mm -hmm. tolerate that because I have children here. Um, so we have to be intolerant of things that are contrary to the will of God. And what about being judgmental? We are judgmental every day. You have to make decisions every day faced with right and wrong. Um, so we must be judgmental to pick and choose those actions that are commensurate with the will of God. So Yes, we are to be intolerant of things contrary to the will of God and judgmental of things mm -hmm. to do that are in line with the will of God. So um, let us realize that we're, we're swimming opposite of the stream um, in our culture today. But uh, as I keep saying, thank you to, to those priests and, and, and the networks like EWTN, our, our ministry here at the Marian Fathers, to get the word of truth out there. Um, and you could join us, uh, visit our site, uh, thedivinemercy.org if you want to learn more about God's mercy. We've been grateful for this relationship that we've had over the years and televising the Divine Mercy Sunday and also, of course, recording the Divine Mercy Chaplet. And your Superior General, Father Roche, recently was in Rome as we celebrated the anniversary of Mother Angelica's birthday. And he gave a beautiful homily and reflection uh, on our relationship. So let's take a look at that clip right now. Mother also watched out for her flock. She ardently wanted her viewers to come to know Jesus and the love of the Father. She didn't run away when things <clears throat> got difficult. She trusted in the Lord and persevered. She received many gifts and graces from the Lord. And she also offered him many things in return, including her sufferings until the very end of her life. It's significant that she began her last agony on Good Friday and she went to meet the Lord on Easter Sunday. 
Precious in the eyes of the Lord is the death of his faithful one. Mother became like a victim soul at the end of her life. She offered her sufferings to the Lord and she wanted to live as long as possible so that she could continue to unite with the Lord until the very end. Let's pray for her. Beautiful words. So we're called to continue to bring this gospel to the ends of the earth and we're happy for the relationships we have with so many uh, good people. Well, last episode, we talked about uh, different stories. And so I'd like to share also some stories in this episode. Michael, do you have another story that maybe you could share about how the network has impacted people? Well, I absolutely. I have thousands of stories. I mean, I <laughs> guess the one that comes to mind, having just heard, you know, Father, Father Roche and that beautiful tribute to Mother Angelica, um, was really one where uh, she and I were, were, as we often did, meeting together on Friday afternoon one day and um, sipping, she was sipping on her tea and, you know, I, I said to her, what do you think one day the legacy of EWTN will be? And without hesitating, she didn't miss a beat, um, she said, the, the witness of EWTN will be not what we've done, not all of the television channels, radio channels, all of those things. The witness of EWTN will be how we've done what we've done, which is by relying completely and totally upon God's providence. And, you know, I think that was something that defined Mother, that, that little story of that interaction between she and I. But it really sums up, I think, her life as a witness to providence that throughout her life, giving witness to God's providence in all things and all ways, um, as, as Father Roche, you know, so beautifully uh, mm -hmm. noted. Um, and that continues to be the, the story of EWTN today. It continues to be the witness of EWTN today, which is that all we do is done by reliance on God's providence. And you met with her regularly the last active years of Mother Angelica's life. I'm sure she imparted to you many things of her vision for the network, including what you just talked about. Maybe what are some other things that she shared with you during your regular meetings with her? Yes, I was very blessed um, during those really last 10 active years that Mother, Mother had with EWTN to be with her on an almost daily basis, uh, many times a day, many hours a day. Um, and so there were so, so many lessons. Um, but, you know, I, I think, um, uh, you know, there, there certainly the, the importance of a, a personal and, and really deep connection to our Lord um, in, in every aspect of one's life, living what, what we would call you know, a, a fully integrated Catholic life. I mean, that was something that was so, so important to her and, and, and something that she witnessed to me personally um, and, and taught me so much about. Um, and always to, again, on, the, on, on relying on God's providence, to never get ahead of God's providence. <laughs> but always discern and to rely on that providence and, and to continue to push forward and to continue to serve the Lord and work for the Lord uh, with trust and with faith um, and uh, sometimes with a queasy feeling in your stomach as you, <laughs> as you move forward. Um, so I've, I've, uh, I've learned that from her as well. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you for your wonderful leadership take carrying Mother's charism on these years that Mother has been gone and as the network has continued to grow. So I'm grateful and I'm sure our viewers are very grateful for your service and continuing Mother's legacy. Uh, Sister Joanne, I noticed in the video that you have Adoration of the Blessed Sacrament. Is that part of your community's charism? Yes, mm -hmm. yes we have. Um... We have exposition every morning, and then three times a week we do have um, adoration um, with the Blessed Sacrament. And then on um, Friday nights we have, with the Blessed Sacrament exposed, we have praise and worship. And on Sunday night after um, our dinner, we have just quiet time with the Blessed Sacrament once again. Just time to just sit with him and ponder and ask him Whatever, wherever the sisters are, you know, it just gives us time very quietly um, to sit with the Lord and under, and, you know, for about an hour before we um, close with our night prayers. 
And it gets us in the morning, it gets us through the day, gives yes. us the strength that we need. And at nighttime, it gives us the peace that we need to see us through the night. Beautiful. Yes, that's the source of our strength here. It's always the heart of EWTN. We have adoration seven days a week, and we broadcast that on all of our transmissions because the Lord's with us in this profound way, and he's the, he's the general, if you will. He's the one who is leading uh, these apostolates. Father Chris, how about any stories that you might want to share on divine mercy? Well, first, I'd, I'd like to comment as uh, we watch that clip on Father Joe. I, I have to smile because I hear Father Joe Roche quote Mother Angelica as much as any saint. <laughs> so I, I don't know if that's prophetic um, of, of her future um, being raised to the altars, but I, uh, I've always heard him uh, give wisdom in, in her statements, so uh, uh, very much so. But I, I think one of the reasons that um, I'm so moved by the apostolate work of mercy and, and is the link between EWT and the Marian Fathers with our show, Living Divine Mercy, um, was the international impact. Um, I, I, I just am very taken by what is happening in Ireland uh, for both the good and the bad. Um, and uh, most recently, they did defend the Constitution and the, the role of the family. But prior to that, had voted in abortion and redefining of marriage. Um, but I went to do a conference there, a Divine Mercy conference. We had 10, over 10,000 people when I spoke, and many who came to the table uh, stated that they knew of our work through EWTN, and, um, and so we were therefore um, able to, to, to join together in getting mercy out to the world. But what really struck me was uh, the um, crowd that was at the table as we were signing books, and all of a sudden, through the massive crowd, two arms broke through the crowd and presented me a little tiny baby. Um, mm. And I stopped exactly what I was doing, took the baby in my arms, and I was told by the caregiver that this little precious child, his mother had died um, just after giving birth to the two twins. He had a twin. Then that twin died um, due to medical complications. And then this little boy that I was holding had oxygen in his nose, um, and he had mm -hmm. suffered a very rare blood disease and now was an orphan and his father had abandoned him. And that caregiver was there bringing that little boy because she had seen and really responded to the message of mercy as seen on EWTN. Beautiful. So when you can have hope in the midst of something like that, yeah. um, we really know the importance of this work uh, of spreading mercy. Well, thank you. We've come to the end of our time. Unfortunately, there's so much more that we could share. But I encourage you to visit the different uh, websites of the Divine Mercy Fathers and the Missionaries of the Poor Sisters, of course, our own EWTN, and get involved, that we're all called to be involved in the spiritual and corporal works of mercy, extending the mercy of the Lord to others. And may Almighty God bless you, and we will see you next week here on the Catholic Sphere. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit.